Ever wonder what really goes on in the back of a truck? We have tires and road conditions and suspension that come together and form a complex vibration that gets transmitted up into the cargo area. Well, let's find out. Brings back memories of the good old days. Crawling on the truck. So we wanted to go on that face. I got real teeth. There you go. There, that's better. All right. And up right. It's actually got this neat because it's got the instrumentation triax, same yeah. the triax. Yeah. Got the back plate so it gives you an idea you're on the back of the truck. That wedding lens. Yeah, it's amazing. Check it out. Good stuff. Lansmont is located on Monterey Peninsula in California's beautiful central coast. So we took our big yellow truck and we outfitted it with our field instruments, the Saver 9X30, some external accelerometers, and an array of cameras so that we could also see what was happening inside the truck and at the suspension level on the truck. We uh, set out on a little expedition around the neighborhood. We went into Monterey and up to Castroville and across to Salinas and down to Chular and back to Salinas and then back to the home base at Lansmont. And this encompassed kind of a wide variety of roads from two lane commuter roads through four lane highways at a variety of speeds and construction sites. So once we got back, we downloaded the data and we had the instruments set up to record continuously so we had basically an entire record for the entire journey. We looked through the data, found some interesting sections, and created drive profiles. This is the camera setup. Uh, we have the one camera mounted under the vehicle. Uh, this allows us to kind of see the road conditions and see how the suspension is responding to those, those inputs. We have two cameras up in the cargo area. Uh, one is a wider shot that allows us to see all the containers and gives us the notion of whether they're responding in a similar manner across the vehicle. And then a tight shot on uh, an individual container so we can actually watch the water moving around inside it. This is the first data section. This is uh, coming into Monterey and transitioning from Highway 68 onto Highway 1 and it moves from a two-lane road to four lanes, uh, then onto a four-lane concrete highway. So you might remember uh, when Eric mounted the camera underneath the vehicle, it's rigidly attached to a frame cross member. And the view that we'd ideally like to have uh, would put a reference frame relative to the surface of the road and that would allow us then to see how the vehicle was moving in relation to that and that's a little hard to achieve when you're when you're rigidly attached to the vehicle uh, so we got a little creative you can see that there's a couple of dots down on the suspension members underneath the airbags there we're going to do some motion tracking on those dots and then we're going to adjust the frame so that those dots stay in the same position on the screen. And what this will do is shift the frame of reference from the frame of the vehicle 
to basically those suspension mounts. And you can see as it, the, the vehicle's going down the road here, the cargo uh, area and the frame looks like it's moving relative now to the axle there. And this is not perfect, but it's, it's pretty good. Uh, the tires obviously are still in the equation here and they're not accounted for in this method. But in the large strokes, the large movements, you do get to see how the vehicle is responding to the road inputs. As we watch the containers respond to any of these inputs, and we look across, we can see that by and large, you know, across side to side in the vehicle, these things are responding in similar ways. And it turns out water is pretty good at showing waveforms. You know, who'd have thought? All the containers have basically the same water level in them. So the lower left, this is input. The top is response, and here the reference frame is the vehicle itself because we want to see how the test item is responding to the input. And then the lower right, this is product response as well. Keep a close eye on the, on the wave fronts inside the, the container. We're going to come back to that in a few minutes. Alright, so that is our first section of data. Uh, so. We have data, we have an idea of how the test items respond to that, that input. We have an idea of how the vehicle was moving. Let's create a test to reproduce that information. As we begin the transition from field to lab, let's watch this truck go down the road here for just a minute. We need to think about what type of test is it that we want to run. And because we're trying to maintain a visual comparison between the test item in the truck and the test item that will be on the vibration system, for our purposes today, we're going to use a time history replication. So all of those time records, we're going to play them back directly and have the vibration system reproduce that. Now as we watch this truck go down the road, it does indeed look like the primary input here is vertical. There's other things going on, but the primary motion is up and down. So let's construct a test. We're going to create a time history record for our test one sequence. And it's going to be the vertical component only. All right, there we go. That looks pretty good. So let's see how we're doing with the test item on top of the table. We have the test item response, and then we have the test item in the back of the truck. Hmm. Well, it looks like we're getting the primary vertical motion pretty good here, but unfortunately our test item's not responding in the same way that it actually did inside the truck. 
All right, let's rethink this for a second. What else can we do here? With the saver, we recorded X, Y, Z, and from that we're also able to get pitch and roll and yaw. Let's put the whole thing together. So we're gonna ha still have the primary motion be up and down just as it was recorded, but we're gonna allow the system now to reproduce all of the other motions that were going on in the truck. So here we have the test item on the vibration table and the test item in the rear of the truck. And if you watch the table down here, the motion still primarily is up and down but there are other inputs here. And you know, what's interesting is we often think of vibration as this two-dimensional graph of a sine wave or random vibration passing through a plane. But the reality is uh, vibration's kind of a three-dimensional waveform that's emanating out in space.